There's been a lot of talk over the past few weeks from a large enough cohort of both fans and media that these two guys, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, can't play off of each other in a format that results in winning basketball. A few days ago, we saw Jalen Brown return to play one of his only truly healthy games of the 21-22 season, and together with Tatum, they basically destroy the Giannis-led Bucks. Let's take a look at how they did that. Let's start with this one. Early in the game here, we see Tatum initiating the play. Smart sets a pin down screen for Jalen who curls up and around Time Lord who immediately dives to the hoop. With Middleton now trailing Jalen, Portis has to step in and defend him, leaving Rob open for the lob. A non-rusty Jalen doesn't flop this pass. Here Smart brings the ball up and Tatum fakes a ball screen, getting Grayson Allen switched onto Smart who then masterfully splits the defenders, creating all kinds of chaos. All he has to do now is wait for the defense to collapse, kick it to the corner and swing it till we find the right shot. Now here's the moment where Drew Holiday realizes he has to come in and tag Jalen Brown while also keeping some focus on a now wide open Jason Tatum on the weak side. This is just a beautiful image really. Now, ultimately, Jalen makes the little short dump off pass to Rob, which is the right play, but the point is the amount of space he's created for Jason Tatum. This is a great semi slow transition play with Tatum dribbling to the wing, then passing middle to Jalen, who is already receiving a big fat screen from Al Horford, which then results in some typical pick and roll action. But look at this screen that Time Lord sets for JT, perfectly timed with Jalen's kick out pass, resulting in another wide open look for Tatum. Love Jalen Brown's playmaking there. Also, an underrated part of that play, look at the initial screen set by Rob, ultimately rejected by Tatum, but just shifting the defense's focus for a second, creating a little misdirection before the real play unfolds. Now we see Jalen bringing the ball up, and he's definitely done the wrong thing here, dribbling straight to the corner, essentially into a double team of his own creation. And here we go, give me that ball back, Rob. Now a little weak side action here while Horford cleverly dives to the hoop, bringing Giannis with him, leaving who open for another open look? Say it with me, Jason Tatum. Also, not to get sidetracked here, but imagine if that swing option is a league average three-point shooter. Never mind, I digress. How about some nice clean J on J action here? Jalen makes the pass as Tatum comes off a Time Lord pin down screen and not a lot of space for JT to work with here. Portis does a nice job of shuffling back to Rob there, but as a result of crowding around Tatum, look who's open. And this is just savvy, patient stuff here from Jalen Brown, who waits for the closeout, finds some space, and would you look at that, another wide open tray for JT. This is a simple one, Tatum bringing the ball up, immediately attacks the middle and creates just a little bit of space for Brown, who is one of only two players on the roster, the other being Tatum, who can actually create something out of this little pocket of space. And he does just that, great finish. Now, the other way Tatum and Brown have to help each other win is by carrying the offense while the other rests on the bench. Here's an example of Tatum doing just that, working with significantly less space now, Look at that crowd around him, yet he gets to the hoop and draws the contact. Jalen's first attempt at solo running the offense came midway through the second quarter and blame Rust, maybe blame the banged knee, but his first shift did not go well. And to be fair to Jalen, it's not like Tatum was perfect at times either. Don't worry because JB's second shift as offensive leader went much more smoothly. Nothing fancy here, bit of ball movement out of Rob's offensive rebound as the ball finds its way to Jalen who pops the deep three. Again, not a lot of guys on the roster who can do that. Now, admittedly, the reel of Tatum's sole captaincy of the offense is much, much longer, and we see here as the initial space he creates amounts to nothing, he backpedals out as part of the reset. Not a lot of space to work with, hesitation, head down, left-handed dribble drive, and switch to the right-handed floater in traffic. That's your 23-year-old superstar right there. 
Brown still on the bench here, and this one is particularly awesome. Look what Tatum does to Middleton as he fakes flying off that screen and instead cuts back towards the wing. And then this footwork to get around Rodney Hood is unquestionably elite. One final Tatum solo play here, and this is important because historically the Celtics have struggled against zone defenses. Here Tatum wanders directly into the exact space that a typical 2-3 zone affords you, and that's money in the bank. Back with the Jays working together here, Tatum initiating the play as Brown flares up off a Time Lord screen. Now, despite its simplicity, the awesomeness of this action cannot be overstated. Give one Jay the ball and run some action to get the other Jay open. Jalen sees Tatum's defender in pursuit, and look at that, another wide open Tatum three. Really starting to notice a trend here. This play starts out in transition thanks to a Jalen Brown block, and of all the areas of their tandem game they need to work on, it's definitely chemistry in transition, but in this case, Tatum slows things down, waits for the double team to come to him, and then here's this all-star, Jalen Brown, open above the break, who probably should have found Tatum open for three there, but hey, all-stars make shots like this. This play ends in a wide open Jalen Brown three. Well, how does that happen? Grayson Allen's in the corner there, aware of Jalen's presence. Well, the Bucks defense elects to double Jason Tatum here, allowing Horford a free roll to the hoop. Allen has to rotate to cover the paint and Tatum sees it before anyone does. Amazing. How about a bit of Tatum Brown pick and roll in your life? In this case, it results in Connaughton switching onto JT and what does Shaq say? Barbecue chicken? Someone give Connaughton a hug, that's just nasty. Look at point Jalen bring the ball up here, and the key is Tatum slipping the screen and drawing his defender away from the play, while Smart does a similar thing with his defender. This essentially creates an easy one-on-one -on -one for Jalen, and not to shit on Connaughton too much, but that's easy money for JB. However, none of that should overshadow the awesome karate kickout pass to Grant Williams, the three-point cheat code, and look at that sweet celebration by Tatum. Underrated. This play is messy and perhaps takes too long to develop. So then, where is the magic happening on this one? First of all, Tatum again is wide open here because Drew Holiday is worried about giving up an open shot to Grant Williams. And then right here, Bobby Portis does nothing to cut off Jalen's drive again because he's more concerned about Grant Williams. This is the world we live in right now, and as if this isn't awesome enough, it ends in the epic Horford alley-oop finish. Probably more of a testament to Grant Williams than either Jay this one, but I had to throw it in there. Two more to finish up here. This time Smart sets the ball screen for Jalen, who hits him on the short roll. The defense is packing the strong side. Kick out, swing, swing, bucket. Point Jalen again here, and now it's Horford with the ball screen. And by this point, it really seems the Bucks defense just has no idea what to do. Jalen finds Smart underneath with a genuinely good pass, and then Tatum is just all alone on the weak side. And I know the Bucks give up a lot of threes, but at this point, Coach Bud has to have said, guys, if you leave Tatum open one more time, you are walking back to the airport. And look at the fear on their faces as they sprint towards this situation. That is it for this one. I had to cull quite a few clips to keep this video at a reasonable length. Hopefully Tatum and Brown give us lots of reasons to create more content just like this in the near future. If you're a fan of what we're doing here, subscribe to the podcast. We're averaging about two episodes per week at the moment. Subscribe to the channel and most importantly, comment below. We love hearing from you.